In this video, I'm going to go over how to actually use this FOSS program. We last left off going through this confusing interface. A few updates later, and we have an even more confusing interface. Hooray! Let's go over the tracks first. When you first begin a new project, our door offers you a selection of four default templates. An empty template, an advanced session template, a recording session template, or a live band template. For our tutorial purposes, we're going to choose the empty template. Here we have a pretty empty Ardor session with some settings changed because I use this every day. To start adding tracks, you have two choices. You can either click tracks and select it, or right click the empty space below the master channel. Here you are presented with seven channel types, more like six types of one template, but I won't get into that. Audio tracks. These tracks allow recording and importing audio clips into this track type. You can manipulate audio clips or record new ones from a routed source, such as a microphone. MIDI tracks. These allow MIDI data clips, either drawn directly in our door, imported from a file, or recorded in the session. Audio plus MIDI tracks. These tracks are used for a special case when utilizing plugins that require both MIDI input and audio input, that's when you would use this track. Such as voice modulators or synthesizers, you probably won't be using this track type unless you enjoy modulating your voice. Audio buses and MIDI buses. These are the same as your track counterparts, except that you can't use clips on them. These are useful for separating plugin processing, such as having the same reverb for multiple different tracks without having to copy and paste the reverb to each individual track. The same goes for MIDI plugins and data for the MIDI buses. VCA Masters. I actually have no idea what these are. I've never used them. Oh well. Live band is just a template for live band recording setups. I don't know why this is here. For this tutorial, I am just going to go over audio and MIDI tracks. Let's start with the audio track. Audio track. There are a few options when configuring a new audio track. Name sets the name of the track and how it will appear on our door and in the Jack audio backend, such as appearing for other Jack aware applications in the system. Configuration sets how many channels the track will have, from a range of one channel to however many you can set before your computer crashes. Stick with stereo or mono, unless you're mixing for surround sound systems, then you would go for six to eight channels. Group sets the group that the track is assigned to. This can be used for organizational purposes. Record mode allows either normal recording or tape recording. Normal recording is a non-destructive way by instead of overwriting the same audio file, it creates a new one in our door for every recording take. Tape recording is a destructive way, meaning that it will overwrite that same audio file in every take instead of creating a new one. Don't worry too much about pin mode. Strict is the default and most likely fine for whatever you're doing. However, you do have flexible in and out as an option. I am just going to demonstrate using a single channel audio track attached to my microphone. By default, Ardor connects any available inputs to a newly created audio track. We got a track and an input. Time to show off recording. All tracks have a red circle button that you can click and highlight it. This enables the track to record the input of the track. Wait, what? At the top, we have the same record button. When we press it, the session is primed for recording. Clicking the play button begins the recording from wherever the playhead is in the session. With the recorded clip, you can manipulate it in many ways. You can change the pitch, stretch the source, or even reverse it. These are a few options that you can do with the clip in the audio track. 
Now let's move on to the MIDI track. MIDI track. There are a few available options for the MIDI track. Name just names the track for the same reasons as the audio track. Instrument selects a primary synth to route MIDI input data through. Group puts the track into a group for, again, the same reasons as the audio track's group selection. For this demonstration, I will use the general MIDI synth that comes with our door by default. You have to set the MIDI input manually if you have a MIDI device connected. You can record this in the same fashion as the audio tracks and manipulate them in a similar fashion. But what if you don't have these fancy devices to record from? Well, fear not! We have... Importing! Importing and creating clips. This is helpful if you have instrument recordings or samples to manipulate. The import manager has different options on how to import files. In a new track, in the region list, or a tape track. Insert it in the session start, playhead, or edit point. Mapping is an important choice, either one track per channel or file. Once you import it, you can eh. once you import it, you can manipulate it like any other clip in our door. Let's say that you don't have saved MIDI files, we would have to create our own in our door itself. Luckily, our door has a piano roll that's accessible by stretching out the MIDI track. To start creating with MIDI, we'll be focused with using two modes in our door, draw mode and internal edit mode. Start off with draw mode and draw a clip on the timeline. Draw mode and grab mode have their own configured settings that you can change. For draw mode, I recommend these settings, grid mode for using the strict grid when drawing their notes, and beats for a note length that you are drawing. You can change the note length to whatever fits your needs. You can also stretch out notes in whatever fashion, such as triplets if you're fancy like that. The piano roll shows information such as key and velocity for each note you draw. The grid changes based on time signature. MIDI clips will move and change in session as the session tempo changes. So you can decide whether you prefer a faster or slower tempo. Unfortunately, audio clips do not share the same functionality. That is all we will cover for the video today. Next time, we will go over mixing.